Wesley Wells Anderson, known as Wes Anderson, is a famous American director and screenwriter, known for his popular movies like Fantastic Mr. Fox, Moonrise Kingdom, The Grand Budapest Hotel, frequently casting Jason Schwartzman, Bill Murray, and Owen Wilson, and his distinct style using vibrant colours and symmetry. Originally, Anderson wanted to become an architect, then a writer, but past film creators before him, like Alfred Hitchcock, inspired him into filmmaking. But how did he start out in the industry? Well, it all started with Anderson and the Wilson brothers' short film, Bottle Rocket which Anderson chose to base his first film around due to it being a success. He got support from big directors like James L. Brooks through the help of the Wilsons, which allowed them to get a $5 million funding from Columbia Pictures, only for it to bomb in box office, only making just above 560000 But even though audiences didn't like Boulder Rocket, the film got the attention of Touchstone Pictures, who allowed Anderson to create his next film, Rushmore, which would only be the start to his career. Memories and locations of Anderson's life are shared within his films. If we take a look at Rushmore, there is a range of memories within it. The school Max attends was the same Anderson went to. Max's plays were based off of how Anderson himself could make plays for behaving at school. And when Max asked the bully to be in his play was like when Anderson approached Owen Wilson to be in his play. Anderson's narratives all follow a similar structure of a dysfunctional family. Getting divorced. Which comes from what Anderson would describe as the most crucial event of him and his brothers growing up his parents' divorce. It's evident in all of Anderson's films that there's either a parental figure missing or a troubled relationship between parents and children. Take Fantastic Mr. Fox for example. Ash has a troubled relationship between his parents and acts out rebelliously. Or Anderson's first film, Bottle Rocket, we never see their parents or families to create the idea that they've either been rejected by their families or they've rejected them. Anderson uses a set of the same camera techniques which help establish his unique visual style. He commonly uses gourd's eye, panning whip pans and symmetry. The use of these shots are visible from his first couple of movies and develop towards his newer films. Anderson's use of symmetry comes from the influence of Stanley Kubrick. Comparing scenes from Anderson's films and Kubrick's, you notice the similarities and in inspiration taken by Anderson. But I think I'm always pretty influenced by Kubrick. Other than camera angles, Wes Anderson uses different aspect ratios for his films compared to other filmmakers, even though it's financially riskier. Anderson chooses to use different aspect ratios for his own personal style and so the characters don't feel squished into the frame. In the Grand Budapest Hotel, Anderson uses different aspect ratios to distinguish between two different times. He uses a smaller traditional 4x3 size for showing the past and a larger size for the present. Although Anderson is known for using saturated colours, this style didn't develop until his third movie, The Royal Tenenbaums. Fitting in with Anderson's quirky style, he uses a symbolic coat of colour to create mood and uses associated saturated colours as a narrative device. Anderson uses the colour red to symbolise past trauma characters have gone through. You know, my best friend just got killed. Chaz in The Royal Tenenbaums was a red tracksuit after being abandoned by his father and after his wife dies. The colour yellow is used when characters are at peace, like in the ending of Moonrise Kingdom, Susie wears a yellow dress. Other than costume colours, Anderson makes his set colour choices extremely vivid and exaggerated to make it obvious of the emotion he's trying to convey, like blue during Richie's suicide or the murkish greenish water in Rushmore. Anderson establishes context explicitly through either titles or narration and transformed picnic into the French dispatch. Titles are used in a way to caption what he's showing and to break up the scenes like chapters, which essentially creates his storybook vibe his movies create. In The Raw Tenenbaums, Anderson uses titles to tell the audience which room belongs to who in the beginning. Slow motion and fast paced scenes are placed throughout Anderson's films at least once. Slow motion shots are used for the audience to establish an emotional connection to the characters, whereas fast paced scenes in Anderson's films are used to build up chaos, and once the chaos is over, creates either a comedic atmosphere. Chaz? Or can let the audience reflect on what the characters experienced. He's dead, he's dead. With editing, Anderson's music and sounds he picks are used lightly. Anderson does this to not distract from the story, but to blend in and make a bold statement when needed. The codes and conventions Wes Anderson considers makes his films an extension of his life and personality. Each film's vibe and colour palette being different yet feeling like they are connected in a self-contained universe, creating his own distinctive style, attracting mature audiences to his visually pleasing creative work. 